documentation from ZFS copy on write a problem? And do they give you a way to determine whether you have fragmented your model? They, as far as I know, they don't give you a way to determine it, no. And I don't know whether fragmentation is going to be a problem for us or not. Um, now, as a, um, so we have always periodically optimized our InnoDB tables. We optimize a slave and then roll that slave snapshot out to other slaves and eventually even switch the master and reparent um, to avoid InnoDB fragmentation. Well, and create an index on the table. Yes, <laughs> right. You copy it. Exactly. Um, uh, we, our use case is such that we don't care, at least so far, care too much if the data, the data actually gets fragmented on disk because most of that data lives in memcached, and most of the indexes we want to use to complete our queries we have in RAM. Um, so, and we haven't been using these long enough to really fragment them. So this is an open question we're thinking about and, and talking to Sun about, and we just don't know. But I will certainly blog about it or speak about it or both whenever we do have any useful data about it. Um, so, um, one great thing is that backups are a breeze. Um, we can uh, schedule on the appliance with no, nothing to do with your uh, MySQL client. Um, automatic snapshots at whatever frequency we want, and we can retain them for as long as we want. Um, so most of our uh, slaves right now, I'm taking a snapshot every hour, and I'm just keeping them, uh, like 24 of them, and then coalescing into a day. And I actually have it scheduled to keep it for years. Um, and uh, in theory, we get this for free or close to free, thanks to copy on write. Um, we, can, uh, we don't need to do anything on the client, like flush tables with read lock, or stop the slave, or uh, shut it down, or anything like that, which is really nice. Um, and we can roll back uh, to an hour ago really easily uh, if some rogue SQL statement did get through. It hasn't happened uh, for us ever. But for seven years now, I've lived in fear of some accidental drop table or something like that. And this way, we could roll back. Uh, instead of keeping what we used to do, which was keeping like a delayed slave, um, we can now you know, roll back to some point in time and step forward until we get to the, the statement, skip it, and, and move forward without needing to think about it too much. So I spend less time thinking about it, the issue, which we've never experienced, but just scares me, which is really nice. Bringing up a new slave is easier than it's ever been. Instead of multi-hours to bring one up, uh, it's now multi-seconds. We just click snapshot, click clone, and then mount it on our, uh, on our new client, and away we go. And uh, what's more, the terabytes worth of data that isn't changed, uh, of course, doesn't get duplicated or anything, so we get uh, efficient disk and in-memory cache on the appliance utilization. Yeah? yeah. Do you have to do I know the deep crash recovery? Yeah, exactly. OK, so I'm curious to know, uh, what's the size of your INFB Redhead log, and how long does crash recovery take for you? Um, so our, uh, are you, wait, what, what? Oh, the, uh, the, the IB data crash log? Recovery is really so each slow. of our, so we use, of course, two files. Each of them are 384 megs, usually. But we are starting to tune that on sort of a per uh, cluster um, uh, basis. Um, and recovery. I don't know, uh, 10 to 30 minutes, probably, typically. Um, never like hours or anything like that. Um, we don't actually do, I don't know, we don't do recovery in many time sensitive, any time sensitive situations. So we usually just start it and then come back and check it later. So I haven't timed it in an awfully long time. Um, but thanks to transactional replication, that's all we need to do to like bring one of these snapshots to life as a slave. Um, which we really like. Uh, I think ZFS is probably going to get dedupe at some time, uh, which means that those uh, clone slaves may even get some disk and, and in-memory uh, cache optimization from, from uh, doing writes simultaneously, same exact writes. It can just see that those writes are occurring to disk and, and just do one write instead of, say, 10 or something. Um, so uh, IO savings and and disk savings. That's not a feature in ZFS now. I'm just like imagining the future. Um, uh, some other nice benefits are we get to use Dtrace on Linux, at least for our storage uh, layer, um, because they expose Dtrace very well instrumented uh, in a really great graphical user interface uh, through a web browser on each of these appliances. 
Um, so in the past, we used to call our storage vendors and say, hey, you know, we're running into something that looks like a problem with your product. And they'd say, yeah, well, we don't know either, so why don't you just buy some more disks? Uh, these days, with uh, thanks to analytics on these things, I know ridiculous amounts of data and can try a ridiculous amount of things before I even pick up the phone or, or email some. Um, and uh, it was sort of surprising the first few times I emailed them about strange stuff because their emails back to me were, what does analytics say? And I would, just wasn't used to having this amount of power uh, before. Um, so if you haven't played with it and you care about storage, it's really, really amazing. Um, we use NFS v3. We've tuned the record size to 16K to match InnoDBs. Um, we do RAID 1 plus 0 with striped uh, SSDs. Um, we uh, we uh, typically still are CPU uh, bound or probably in some cases concurrency bound with stuff inside of uh, InnoDB, but that's getting less and less common every time Mark and the Percona guys and, and uh, Hiki take another swing at the bat. Um, if you're going to compress your data, use LZJB, not GZIP. GZIP uh, actually will take up quite a bit of CPU and sometimes add quite a bit of latency to your uh, writes uh, compared to LZJB. Uh, LZJB is less efficient, um, but I'm not looking for awesome data compression. I'm looking for acceptable data compression that's still fast. Um, in theory, you can optimize InnoDB since you're on ZFS. Um, so a double write buffer in theory isn't needed because that's sort of what ZFS is doing already and ZFS does its own checksumming. So we tried them off, and we really, in, in practice with our workload, we didn't really see a significant performance difference. Uh, uh, we have run into some problems. I mentioned that we uh, had uh, uh, the relay and master info files be two months out of date on one of our slaves. Uh, we haven't dug into MySQL's code yet for why that is, because there was a sort of an obvious solution with transactional replication, but it's probably and mapping those files, and so Linux and its NFS stack um, isn't seeing them as writes and doesn't bother to push them over the wire. Um, so be aware of that. Do you use transactional replication? It'll save your butt. Um, NFS locking and InnoDB is still an open question we're researching. There are uh, posts on the net saying don't do it, but very little data about why you shouldn't do it. Um, so there is, there are still some things that sort of uh, cobwebs in the corners that we're still looking into. Um, and as soon as I know more, I certainly will share. Um, uh, we're investigating using 10 gigabit to reduce latency even more if we can. Uh, we suspect some of that 250 microsecond latency could be reduced by using 10 gig. Um, but uh, it's proving to be sort of difficult to, to get to the bottom of with our limited resources because uh, the native uh, Ethernet drivers are all tuned for throughput rather than latency. Um, so you have to tune the interrupt coalescing and receive and transmit buffers and all this sort of stuff, which we're just barely starting to do. I really wanted to have some neat numbers and stuff for this, but I, I just haven't had the time. Um, but the interesting thing, yeah? Trump, the single gig that you can add We are. How many are um, So we have, uh, some of our Toros have 10 gig cards in them now. Uh, and some are just trunked uh, two giggies. Um, uh, so the, each, the default uh, configuration for these things is four uh, one gig ports. Um, so we use one for management and then we could trunk two or three of the others. Um, but they have, I think, six or something open PCI Express slots per head unit. So you can toss in more giggy or 10 giggy cards or even more SAS cards or all kinds of other stuff. They're expandable, which is really nice. They are single giggy right now, except for the test nodes that we're trying to reduce latency with. So we have like two boxes with 10 gig cards. And you haven't tried trunking the live scale mode? Uh, like trunking the giggies? You mean? Why? We haven't needed to trunk uh, gigabit Ethernet. We're not, we're not throughput constrained on any of our nodes, uh, except for like bringing up slaves, which again is like a non issue now, and backups, which again is a non issue. Um, so yeah. Um, but the interesting thing is that 10 gig has very recently gotten quite cheap, relatively speaking. Uh, the advent of SFP plus as a as a uh, connector means that you can uh, they're super low power, um, and uh, you can get 48 in a 1U rack switch. And uh, best of all, the cables are only 50 bucks instead of a thousand dollars or more for the optical cables. Um, so you can get switches from people like Arista for 500 bucks a port or less. 
they're super fast. Um, uh, we just don't know yet if this is going to be effective as a latency reduction thing or not. If it's not, we'll probably still put 10 gig in our in our uh, Toros, but not on our plants. Um, so we stick everything else on Toros too, uh, because it's really great for non MySQL workloads as well. Email, all of our stateless Linux mounts, uh, our revision control repositories, developer home directories, you name it. Uh, we stick it all there and it's, it's uh, really fabulous. It's nice to have all the snapshotting and compression and all that sort of stuff. Uh, what's the future look like? Uh, we think it's bright. Uh, it'd be nice to be 100% SSD someday, um, but this is turning out to be so great we're, uh, we're not you know, chomping at the bit to get there. Um, it's still very expensive if you want to do terabyte installations of SSD, but if you're, you know, tens or hundreds of, or low hundreds of gigabytes, you could do it today. I don't know how expensive it is, relatively speaking, but it's possible. Um, we think InnoDB will continue to improve. The community is absolutely on fire, thanks to Yasufumi and uh, Mark and his team at Google and Percona. And now MySQL and Oracle are accepting patches, which I'm so thrilled about. It was starting to look a little scary there for a little while. Uh, we're excited about multi-threaded slave replication. Um, uh, preview was released just last week. We haven't looked at it or played with it or anything, but the fact that somebody's working on it and there's actual code is really exciting for us. Uh, we're excited about Drizzle. We're excited about other storage engines, PBXT and Falcon and Maria. And, uh, that's all I have. Um, so I blog about this stuff all the time. I'm on Twitter all the time. And you might be able to cut through the noise in my inbox if you try. Um, be my guest. Um, so thank you very much. Uh, uh, what is uh, your uh, uh, balancing policy on the switch? Uh, on trunking, are you doing LSCP active on the switch or uh, on the storage server? Um, so. That's a good question. I don't know. Another question. Why yeah. did you choose uh, on NFS uh, instead of Firebase? Just because of file system? Uh, file system was a big reason. We didn't run, want to run ext3 at all if we could help it. So if we did iSCSI, we'd have to run ext3 over iSCSI to a ZFS pool. Um, and I believe there are still, at least on this box, I, I, I don't know for sure, but apparently there are some IOPS constraints to open Solaris ice cousin so. yeah. I don't know who's next, but I'll keep at answering questions yeah, until there's still a few minutes, minutes. Oh good, okay, awesome. Sweet, yeah. Um, what percentage of your RAM do you allocate finance to both? And have you looked around that for plugins? Oh yeah, so compile swap. Sorry, what's that? Compile with no swap so far, or testing shows it works excellent. Oh, great. Uh huh. Um, so, uh, so uh, could everybody hear the question? No. Okay, so he wants to know about uh, how big my InnoDB buffer pool size is and whether I've solved the Linux swap problem. Um, so, we tend to use big buffer pools like 54 gigs or so um, on our nodes. Um, and the Linux squat problem, we solved it a few years ago. I blogged about it. Um, it's not a solution, it's a workaround, um, but it does work. We create uh, small swap partitions using RAM disks and point the Linux kernel at them. And it works amazingly well. It's super simple, and uh, I don't have to dig into the Linux uh, kernel source or anything like that. So I can't wait until it's fixed. That would be great. Uh, any other questions? Yeah. Yeah, you mentioned your slaves are a Um, so we have not sharded. Uh, so the question is, uh, our slaves are terabytes in size. Uh, did we make the decision not to shard and instead try to scale up or out? So uh, we feel like we're scaling up and out, uh, and we're so we're vertically partitioning um, based on load and and the kind of workload that's going on on a given subset of tables. Um, and we've been very close to sharding a few times, at least two or three times in our history close to pulling the trigger, ready to, to do it, and uh, each time either a software or hardware innovation or both has come along that has uh, pushed that uh, far, farther forward. Luckily, we're not growing at like Google or Facebook rates. We're growing about 2x a year. Um, so, so far, through a little bit of our innovation and a lot of innovation from the community or our vendors, uh, we've been able to avoid it. And I hope to avoid it for quite some time. Any other questions? 
Okay, awesome.